Um, the bar has been set very high already. Uh, I hope I can keep track of all the slides that I made. Um, yeah, um, so I'm Vincent. I am indeed coordinator of MigraCode and the NGO behind it, Open Cultural Center. Um, actually, my first slide is my introduction, so I think we can actually start with the first slide. So, yeah, that's me again. Um, <laughs> so I'm working for Open Cultural Center. This is our, one of our biggest programs in Barcelona. I'm going to explain a bit more about that uh, later. But I'm going to start with a bit of an introduction about migration, because my talk today will be about hiring and training people with a migration background to work uh, in tech. So just a bit of an introduction into our program and into migration today. So. I'm going to give you this context because it's important to understand. That was really quick. Uh, <laughs> can you go one back? Okay. Just, uh, it's important to understand um, what we do, obviously, but especially why we do it. And what is the context here in Catalonia, in Spain, and in Europe? Yes, uh, go ahead for the next one now. This was supposed to be five, ten seconds. Cool. <laughs> one back. Okay, now it should be fine. So. Just some context, once someone arrives uh, in Europe, specifically in Spain or in Catalonia and Barcelona, they can apply for asylum. Now, there are different statuses that someone can get to get international protection. All of them give them certain rights, mainly also to work, which obviously is a very important right to have. Um, and it's very good these statuses are there. Unfortunately, many people do not get this status. Actually, we'll see in a bit that there are a lot of people not getting this status. They are often considered to be economic migrants, fortune hunters. Well, you know this narrative from media, unfortunately. Um, so people want to work, people want to contribute, um, but they simply cannot because they do not get the same rights as many, many other people, including uh, local people from Europe. Well, this narrative of a fortune hunter is often, well, actually al almost always, uh, not correct. Poverty and precarity are everywhere. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. People do not leave everything behind um, to find fortune. They're looking for better opportunities. These are pictures from Peru, Salvador, Morocco, considered safe countries. Um, but you can imagine if you go up there that you may want to find better opportunities here in Europe to provide for yourself and your families. Just some statistics, in 2021, 18 million people that were forcibly, forcibly uh, displaced around the world. And due to the situation, the war in Ukraine, the crisis, food crisis in Ethiopia, situation in Afghanistan right now reach 100 million people. And that doesn't include all other migrants that are not considered refugees or asylum seekers. If you look at Europe, um, this is just 2021, the people requesting asylum, over 600,000 people, uh, and Spain is the third country in receiving most asylum requests, together with France, number two, and Germany, number three. And in Spain, more than 65,000 people uh, who requested asylum, who requested protection uh, and their rights as well. However, these are the stats, it's maybe a bit small, but the gray circle, part of the circles are most important, those are the ones that are uh, the denied requests. So for instance, in Spain alone, 71% of those 65,000 people who requested asylum last year have been denied and end up in these precarious situations where they do not have the rights that other people in international protection have. If we zoom in on Spain, this is a bit the, uh, the graph over time. So you see that this is before 2015-16 and then we had the so-called refugee crisis and obviously the number of people arriving in Spain and everywhere in Europe raised a lot and then stagnated due to the corona crisis but we already see in 2022 as you've also just seen now it's already rising uh, a, a lot again. If you zoom in on uh, where people are coming from, it's a lot of people coming from Latin America due to the situations in many countries there, especially Venezuela and Colombia. Also, there's a big link with the historical ties between Spain and Latin American countries. But do not underestimate the number of people coming from other countries as well. They look small, but there are also thousands of people finding international protection in Spain. But then again, if you look at the number of people being denied protection, it's actually only mainly people from Venezuela and Mali that actually get the protection. Almost from all the other countries, like the, the top nationalities arriving are being denied because they're not considered to be legit requests for international protection. Um, and especially Venezuela is almost a bit of an exceptional situation. I think it's good 
obviously many people from Venezuela get the status, but it is a contrast with all the other nationalities. And this is a very important number, because we're just talking about 2021, but there are more than 100,000 people, this was last year, waiting for the outcome of their um, application, for their asylum application, also putting them in very precarious situations, because if you do not know if you actually get the status, that's a very stressful situation. If you look at demographics of the people arriving, there are actually many women also arriving, the narrative as well as so often it's mainly young men, is not the case. There are many women also coming to Spain from everywhere in the world. There are a lot of young people, but also people of a slightly older age group, I won't say old, uh, will offend a lot of people. Um, but so there are young motivated people, there are people also that are slightly older and bringing a lot of experience and skills actually from their home countries. And then before I go into microcode, what we do, we look a bit at where people actually request asylum, because this is an important detail. You see the darker green is where most asylum requests come in. It's Madrid, especially in Barcelona. And that's also because a lot of Latin American people come by plane on a tourist visa and then request asylum. And this is why I'm zooming in now on Barcelona, because this is the reason why we started a tech academy for refugees and migrants. In the philosophy of Mandela, who said education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And we strongly believe that. I've, we think we can really help a lot of people if we teach them new skills and also connect them to opportunities related to these skills. So that's what we basically do at Microco Barcelona, uh, free education. So how do we actually do that? We offer free education. So we have different IT courses with our biggest course, which is actually a web development course of eight months. We offer labor integration services. So we make the connection with the IT sector and recruiters. We focus a lot on community, bringing people together, local people, through volunteering with newcomers. And we offer a lot of additional support in terms of mental health support, uh, mentoring, and also legal advice, which is often necessary. Just a review of our impact. Um, we had over 200 students since we started in 2019. Ananda and Ali are just two examples of the 154 graduates who actually found an opportunity, which is right now 83 people out of those 154 graduates. Again, showing how many people want to make use of these opportunities and find a work opportunity afterwards. So why do companies do this? I may repeat a bit what will be said uh, more often today, but they can choose from a bigger talent pool uh, we bring a lot of new talents. It's obviously very positive for any company to actually actually hire diverse. Their products will be better due and more innovative, more creative. Um, it's proven that companies, uh, the employees in the companies are happier, more productive, and stay longer in the company in diverse companies. And you will get more diverse skills because you will get more diverse backgrounds of all the people. And the stats show it. Higher company gender diversity, 27%, more creativity. High company racial diversity, 35% better financial results. And 87% of the times in diverse teams, uh, diverse teams make better decisions. And a bit of a preview of the next talk, if the global workforce would be gender equal in 2025, there are estimates that the global GDP will rise with $12 trillion. So you'll see that the impact is actually not just ethically necessary, but also uh, has a great economical impact. And that's why we're doing MigraCode. Um, if you want to know more, go to our website. Um, we have a lot of talent to offer. I guess there are some recruiters here tonight, um, and we really want to promote that as well. And I'm here tonight, so if you think, let's talk to this uh, <laughs> guy from MigraCode, I'm here. Thank you very much.